you've got to let them have the keys. They've got to do it. And we all know that leadership is simply never a solo enterprise. And I think of that trust works in a couple of different ways. That's, that's giving people the benefit of the doubt. That's respecting them rather than suspecting them initially until proven otherwise. You've given someone the benefit of the doubt. You've, you've endowed them with a dignity that unless it's proven wrong, they're entitled to. I think that notion of trust also allows you to recognize your own limitations. Um, one of the things about having the same name as the one that's on the building is people give you credit sometimes. I mean, sometimes they'll say, well, he's only got the job because his name's on the building. Perfectly legitimate <laughs> assumption. <laughs> um, but also, because you're in the building, you must know a lot. Well, darn it, it doesn't make you, it may, it may give you a special passion for it or a special attachment for it, but it endows you with no other qualities. And so you have to trust that other people have the ability to do things that you don't have the competence or the ability to do. <coughs> Otherwise, again, you're relying on, you, you, the organization cannot grow. And the final one that I, that I love is uh, the whole notion of optimism. I think it would be hard to be a successful leader and not feel optimistic. I mean, it'd be hard to be a risk taker and not be optimistic. But there's, if you have an optimism, there's a sense that what you're doing is worth doing, even if in the short term it may not pay off. Because you know there's going to be a future where what you're doing makes a contribution and is valuable. And I really love that notion. And I think um, from that, there's a sense also that leadership is, is service. And I know we talk a lot about that and servant leadership and theories like that you've probably all heard of. But from optimism, from feeling good about where you might go and about the value of what you're doing, it, it makes you willing to do things that you might not otherwise do. Um, it makes you, when, when you say that leadership is service, well, that, that allows you to feel responsible, to feel a responsibility to others. And I mean, the, this, is, this is an old picture from from one of the supermarkets in the mid-1950s. And I have no idea who this lady is. But in my dad and my grandfather's world, she's the most important person in a sense in their, in their business or leadership lives because she's got the big cart full of groceries. And every once in a while, we'll have some celebrity come into one of our stores when they happen to be you know, in Detroit working on a project or something, everybody will get all excited because you know, this celebrity or this politician or whatever comes by to visit. And we have to kind of remind ourselves, gosh, that's, it's fun, it's exciting to see you know, the singer or whoever come through, but they're not as important as this lady because they're going back to New York because they're going back to Los Angeles and we're relying on her every week. And so there, there's something very humbling about that, that feels right. Uh, so I guess I think about risk taking, flexibility, tenacity, trust, and optimism. And each one of us <coughs> in this room could have a different list, a longer list, a shorter list. I mean, there's, there's all of these ingredients of leadership that people with a lot more experience than I have, I have, have, have talked about with you. But it's that sense that we're always willing to learn more, that sense that what we're doing is important. I, this, um, we no longer have wood TV as such, but we all know of, of wood radio. Uh, this was an advertisement for wood radio from 1962 when the first Big Meyer store was opened with Mao Zedong, for those of you who, who recognize his image. And I like it because it's, in effect, two different kinds of leadership. And 
it's a leadership of that it grows out of authoritarian ideas of how a society should be governed. It may be well-intentioned or badly intentioned, but it's somebody who would propose to have the answers and and rule in an, in an authoritarian way, assume leadership, but not necessarily in a, in, a, in a constructive sense. And it's people who are trying to figure out what to do right. And I think President Hassan, you're talking, you're talking about right decision. And you're gonna make you're gonna make mistakes, we're gonna sell things we we have no business selling. Our business is going to evolve over time, it's gonna change considerably, but you're trying to understand what people want and serve them, and in that way become a leader. Now that's very different than a politician pandering to someone. That's very different than Arthur Vandenberg deciding that, um, gee, we don't have to risk spending billions of dollars for the Marshall Plan because, hey, I could run around and, and tell everybody what a waste of taxpayers' money. And a lot of people would agree with me. It's saying, no, this is too important for the world not to, and that's a responsibility I've got to take on. So I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I, I do think that those combination characteristics are indispensable for leadership, and I would love, without taking too much more of your time, to just talk with you about things that are on your mind or questions that you might have, and uh, have some fun doing it. Thank you all very much. Yeah, just to throw one out, um, you know, I, I was thinking about risk takers, and obviously you could probably speak a whole hour, two hours about that. But you know, there's there's risk takers who end up leading GE. There's risk takers who are drug drivers and up on the side of the right. road. Is and uh, in a related way, it, it goes to trust too. I, I think of people like your dad or the Iacocca or yourself. What instincts drive you to trust someone with the keys? I mean, you, yeah, nobody does it by, no leaders do it truly by themselves. In the IOCO, we have thousands of people working for them in the best days. It's a good question. I should back up a little bit because when you mentioned risk takers, you're absolutely right. I mean, Evil Knievel was a risk taker. You know, so what in leadership terms? Yeah. Um, but I, so I, I mentioned that not as a I mentioned that as a necessary ingredient, but obviously as insufficient in yeah. itself. Um, trust. Um, I, I want to, that's a great question. What allows us to trust other people? I mean, was it, was it you know, did some of us benefit from, from a household where you could trust a parent to be responsible for you? I mean, if we could get into some pretty scary psychology here, but there's probably <laughs> some of that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. And that, that, um, that you had some security that allowed you to be a trusting person, I, I bet that's a huge part of it. Um, but I think as, as that evolves, if you're fortunate enough to, to grow up with the ability to trust, because there are probably some people who haven't had that opportunity. Um, but if you have the ability to trust, then the, look, I guess if you, you've got to set your ego aside, because you've got to say, um, I not only trust that you are well-intentioned, but I also respect that you may be able to do things that I can't do and I'll trust you to try to do them rather than have me try to figure it all out. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's, that helps. It's, it's kind of asking a really good question. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. <laughs>